Hey folks, welcome back to Cody Tarot. I'm your tarot reader, Cody. So for today's pick a card, we have a very special one. Um, what makes you so damn irresistible? What makes you so attractive? What makes you so hot? What makes you attract the opposite sex or the same sex if you're into that? Like, like crazy. Like, what is it about you that draws people in? Like, what is it about that draws people in? Um, romantically, physically, personality wise, we're going to be covering it all in today's reading. So without further ado, let's get into the groups. Um, group one, you guys know how pick a cards work. I think if you don't, basically you select one of the crystals in front of you. I'm going to show you those one by one in a second. Then you go down to the description box or the, or the comment section, click on the timestamp corresponding to your group. That'll fast forward you to your reading. Okay. So let's get into the groups. Group one, we have this petrified wood. So you can kind of see the wood like it's actually stone, even though it looks like wood. It's so wild that it still retains like it's actual like etchings of the wood on the outside, which is so cool. But that's petrified wood. Um, group two is pre-night. So this lovely kind of light green stone pre-night. That's group two. Group three is smoky quartz. So lovely smoky quartz piece right here. That's group three. Group four is the blue chalcedony. So lovely shade of blue, very heavenly colors. So that's the blue chalcedony, that's group four. And last, group five is the snakeskin agate. So the snakeskin agate is group five. And yeah, let's get right into the readings. If you guys need more time, um, here, let me move these so they look a little better, okay. Um, if you guys need more time to select your crystal, you can pause the video here if you need to. If you need to access that intuition, if you need to pause, take a break, whatever, um, to access that part of your brain that can select the crystal that's going to get you the most accurate reading, that's the point time to do that now. And don't worry if you are not that tuned in with your intuition. Honestly, you can just pick the group that you're drawn to the most. If you like the color of the crystal, the shape of the crystal, whatever crystal that you're drawn to energetically and you feel akin to, which one feels like you. Um, picking the one that feels like you would be a good option too, because we're reading, we're doing a reading about you guys. So yeah, with that said, uh, let's, I'll give you a second to pick your crystal and you can pause it here if you need to. And without further ado, let's get into group number one with the petrified wood. Hey, group number one, this is if you picked the petrified wood. So let's get into your reading about what makes you irresistible. Okay. Um, I don't want to start with first. Let's see, let's start with the archetype cards. I'm gonna pull some cards from this archetype deck. Let's get some cards out for group number one. What makes them irresistible? What cards do I need to see to give the message to group one on what makes them irresistible? Okay, these two wanna come out. We have these top two right here. We have Destroyer and Child Divine, okay. Uh, let's get some more messages here. Let's pull some tarot cards, actually. I'm going to use my um, my basic Raider white deck. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Already with Destroyer and Child Divine, I am seeing that you guys have this ability to be both devious and innocent at the same time. So that's really cool. I, I see that people like that about you, that those that back and forth energy is actually alluring. It creates chemistry, tension, friction, like sexual tension to, let's see what else you got. Okay, so we have, yeah, in general with the four swords reversed, I'm seeing that you guys are a little more energetic than my other groups. I haven't even read for the other groups, but I can tell that this is like my group that has a little bit more energy um, let's see, what else do I want to get? Um, okay, let's get the Whispers of Love. Oh, that's card wants to come out. We have Back to What You Love, Reevaluate Your Desires. Interesting. Um, <laughs> okay, um, you guys are my flashback group with Back to What You Love and Reevaluate Your Desires. This is referring to a flashback of some kind. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. You're the type of people that the reason why you're irresistible to others is because they you remind them of someone from their past. Um, you have a very familiar vibe about you is kind of the vibe that I'm seeing. Um, 
very familiar. Like people have probably come up to you in the past and be like, you know what? You look just like my ex, you know? And it's like, it just so happened to be that their ex was like the best sex of their life or their ex was like the person that changed their world or turned their life world upside down. And people are like, wow, you remind me so much of this person. People probably come up to you so often and tell you how much that you remind them of someone they know in their life. Yeah, because with back to what you love, reevaluate your desires, that's a very strong indicator of that. Um, back to what you love just indicates that your like, purpose in this lifetime is to reorient people back to what their heart truly wants in this world. So, for example, someone could come up to you that has probably lost their way or they maybe... They used to have like a certain type in childhood that was like the type that they fell in love with so easily, but maybe they started dating like the, you know, for example, maybe the person who's like interested in you was dating like the bad boy or the bad girl, or they're experimenting with that in their, their adult life. But in their childhood, they were attracted to other like really innocent people. I'm seeing this kind of dynamic with Destroyer and Child Divine, where you guys know how to play both sides of the spectrum. You can be kind of devious. You can be kind of destructive. And also at the same time, you can be very innocent. Um, I think that honestly, one thing that really attracts people to you when you're, when you're in your innocent stage of life or it's for some of you it's stages of life for others of you this is something that goes back and forth really easily within like a day's time right like at one point you can be really destructive and then at the other point within the day you can be really like innocent and when you guys are innocent people believe that you're like touched by the divine like that's where your like magical aura comes into play because i do see that when you are in your state of innocence with child here Divine is following the word child, which just indicates that you have a magical aura when you're being very innocent. Um, this is really attractive to people, especially people who want to protect you. Um, and also, this is interesting because I think a lot of people who have unhealthy attachments to specific people that they've developed over the course of their life, when they meet you, they can get, they can re, um, how do I put this? They can get in touch. They can re, what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say re get in touch, but that's not an actual phrase. Um, they can reconnect to the part of themselves that was innocent when they were younger and the part of themselves that what they truly desired and loved. I think you guys help people realize what they truly want and love in this world and what their true values are. I think you guys have this way of reflecting values back to people um, or reflecting back to people what they find important. Um, I, this can be kind of destructive, right? Because some people have built up an identity throughout their whole life of like someone, someone different that they want to be than who they really are. And a lot of people who are, I'm going to be honest, a lot of people who are attracted to you guys tend to be fake people. They tend to be people who are so drawn in by your authenticity and the fact that they're so, they're so far away from their own authenticity that once they get close to you, they, they're, they're, first of all, it's like a moth to a flame. You guys have that ability where you attract people like moths to a flame, but you guys are probably a little annoyed by this reading. I'm going to be honest. You're probably thinking like, wow, I, I always attract fake people. How come I only attract fake people? Where are the authentic people? The truth is these people that are attracted to you, your purpose here is to help them relearn their authenticity, right? You're meant to, to break down those barriers of the false false image that they've created within themselves and get them re-in-touch re and re-in-tune. I'm not making sense. My words are making sense. Bear with me, guys. My speech is all over the place tonight. Um, re -in you're, getting, they're, you're meant to get in touch with their inner child and their inner values, what they really truly believed in in youth and their most innocent, pure sense of being. You're meant to break down those barriers for, those, for these people, basically. I also see a lot of these people are very sexually drawn to you. We see that again here with the volcano. Like this energy is just scorching hot, right? There's an explosion and quite literally there could be, you know, explosions in your romantic life as well. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go into further detail with that because it's not an 18 plus reading, but things could go boom in the bedroom. Um, let's see. So... First of all, one a few things that make you hot, right? First of all, with the four swords in reverse, I feel like you guys are very active. You're energetic. You hardly take breaks. Or you hardly rest. You hardly settle down into a position of rest, recovery, relaxation. The cards are actually saying that part of you is a little bit blocked off. 
So in the future, um, this is just besides this reading. I mean, the reading's talking about how you're irresistible, but this is just a little self-care tip that it's okay to take breaks. It's okay to rest. You might think that it's not, or you might dream about the day you can finally rest. Like, oh, I can't wait till I finally get this job or I finally get this opportunity and then I can finally rest. I can finally relax. I'm seeing here that... Um, that's something that you don't want to keep that in your head all the time, right? The, the, the thought or the dream of relaxation. It's okay to actually take some time in the present moment, rest, relax, recover. It, the world's not going to end, right? Um, that's kind of the vibe that I'm seeing here. Uh, but otherwise, people are really drawn into your energetic self. Um, you guys are normally general workaholic types is what I'm seeing, or you just tend to be very busy and active, and people are really drawn into that. With the emperor here, people are assured, reassured by your presence. You provide a stability for others is kind of what I'm seeing. The other thing too with the emperor is you guys possibly have a strong masculine temperament, and this is kind of channeled through your sex appeal. Aries is giving me the vibe of someone who's like an initiator with the emperor here. And all the red color reminds me of the root chakra. I think people feel safe in your presence. As much as you break down their barriers, as much as you are the type of person who's a little bit destructive, you know, um, while also remaining innocent, you definitely break down people's barriers is kind of what I'm seeing. And also it creates more stability in them. There's something very reassuring about you guys. So even though you have the ability to be chaotic and there's a lot of chaos surrounding you and your energy is kind of chaotic in general with the emperor card here it doesn't translate like that to others it translates as stability it translates as control right um even though you guys might view yourself as very wild and passionate and people view you that way too but people feel stable in your presence it's like the people that are drawn to you are actually attracted to chaos because of the stability the chaos brings if that makes sense um, people find, how do I put this? They find the spontaneous antics that you guys create, um, reassuring because it's almost like some people, if they're in like the people that are attracted to you too, it's like some people when they're in such a stable environment and they're so like locked in, right? This is my only life path and everything's routine and, and like basic and they're like stuck in one way of viewing things. Um, they actually find security in people who are spontaneous or slightly destructive because it means that they're they're shaken up out of their routine, right? These people are going to be shaken up out of their routine. And that's kind of what you're getting them to do. You're shaking them out of their routine or the, the walls they've built around themselves and you're getting them back to the basics. Re reconnecting with the innocent child within and what that magical inner values and inner child wanted when they were in in youth, right? So that's really cool. Um, let's look at into some of these other tarot cards. With strength here, you guys could be very strong or you have an ability to tame other wild people as well. So this is might not be people who are attracted to you, but in your environment, people are attracted to you because of this reason. So for example, people are attracted to your chaos but they also know that you have the ability to tame other chaotic people rather easily, even though you're very chaotic yourself. It's like you're almost in control or you're kind of a master of like animalistic impulses and you have this ability to kind of like dominate over others in that way. Um, with the two of wands here, people do see you as kind of a homebody. And this is kind of a thing that is also making you very attractive. There's a few things, a few messages here with the two of wands. First of all, People see that you can actually spend some quiet time at home and like really chill out and have a good time. I think that they don't think that you're like a super extrovert in that regard. I just think that with the four of swords here, plus the two of wands being upright, you might be very busy at home, right? Like you're, you're relaxing at home. You're doing a lot at home, but you're very busy. So you might be like cleaning your house a lot, or you might be like doing workouts at home. I see you guys kind of spending a little bit of time away from the public eye mostly, but very energetically is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. It's almost like you pull your own energy from within yourself. Um, and in order to like, um, create, it's almost like I'm seeing you guys have to go out in order to like calm down or relax a little bit. Like you almost have to be around other people, but I want to say that that's not necessarily your main motive in life. And I think that there's a sense of introversion here that I'm seeing, especially with this, um, this, uh, seven of wands card right here. I am seeing that people in general are a little bit envious of your individuality, right? Um, and I think there are, some people are attracted to it, but I'm going to say most people are kind of envious of it. They, they kind of want to be like you in a sense, or have the ability to stand tall within themselves. I think a lot of people, it's so funny. I met a guy who mentioned this the other day, um, at the gym, he was like, yeah, you don't want to be a sheep, you know? <laughs> so I definitely feel like 
people are drawn to you because you're not a sheep. You're like an individual. You're your own person. Um, and I definitely think that that intimidates a lot of people. But at the same time, I definitely think people view, put you on a pedestal a little bit as well. It's just not the Six of Wands. The Six of Wands talks about recognition and achievement. Seven of Wands, there's a little bit more um, tension in this card, right? Because he has to fight off these people who are on a different level than him, right? He's on this level, right? Other people are on this level trying to fight him. But he's up here, so he has a vantage point. You guys kind of have a vantage point yourselves in this world, in this lifetime. You probably already know you're very powerful people in general. Um, with the volcano here, I'm seeing like extremely powerful. I think you guys have a strong inner core that can explode at any time. And it's interesting because I'm also seeing this child next to this destroyer card. And this child looks like he's being blown out of a volcano. Like behind him, there's all this red. And it's like he's flying through. Like, he, like the volcano's below him and he's just exploded up. So I think that the explosions are not necessarily destructive all the time. There's a vibe here that your childlike nature can explode out of you as well, um, as well as your destructive side. So it's a very strong vibe of like people don't know what they're going to get, right? And that's something that shakes them up out of their humdrum daily existence, like we saw with the emperor, right? People feel stable in your presence because in a way you guys are unstable and you create excitement in their life. And I, I feel like you're very much people who are drawn to you are people who are put on a front are the first type of people that are drawn to you. And this could be, they could be combined too. The other type of person that's drawn to you is someone who's very stuck in their routine and has a, lives a pretty boring life and wants excitement. Like they, they're not someone who likes their routine. They're someone who gets bored of routine, right? And they want that excitement. They want that adventure. They want that chaos, right? Um, and I think sometimes a little bit, this is, can be, um, people who are like both of these, right? I think sometimes people who put on a front or act a certain way or act like a certain person or something like that are very people who have lost their own authenticity. They've gotten caught up and lost in a role. They're very drawn to you because in a way you guys represent authentic values that they so lack, right? They so lack these authentic values. And with child divine, when you guys are in your innocent nature, this aura just emanates off of you, right? Like this aura emanates off of you and people are drawn to it. You might realize when you're not acting aggressive or assertive, this is when you pull in a lot of fake people. And it might be one of those things where you're like, you're thinking in your head, like, well, if I don't act tough or I don't act like intense, like all the fake people are just going to be drawn to me and I'm sick of tired of dealing with fake people, right? The thing is, the reason these fake people are drawn to you and you guys might not even realize this is that you're meant to break down their barriers in order for them to rediscover their own inner values. I know I've mentioned this already in the reading, but I just want to reiterate it again. Your innocent nature is meant to attract others so you can break down their false sense of self and get them re get them to be re re in touch. That's not a right, the right phrase, not the right word. Um, reintegrated with their own sense of values, right? Um, let's look at physical traits. I'm trying not to pull my physical trait cards. I'm trying to look at the actual cards to see what are the physical traits um, that people are drawn to you because of. Um, I'm just going to point this out physically with the volcano here. Climax could be important in sexual terms and stuff like that. I feel like people, they really value that moment with you. Um, with the strength card here, I think you have, you guys have an animalistic nature to you that people are also drawn to. But at the same time, there's a dichotomy here, right? The lion destroys and the white, the woman in the white, she tames, she's taming him, right? So there is a sense of like taming people with your destructive nature, um, you guys recharge at home is kind of what I'm seeing. And so the vibe that I'm seeing here too, is that when you guys spend a lot of time at home, when you go out back out in public, you have a certain charm or a certain allure that lasts for a period of time until your energy drops when you're out in public. I would recommend, especially I'm, I'm feeling like, even though you guys are very chaotic and you seem very extroverted in general, I do sense an introverted side to you that really requires time alone to recharge and reestablish your char charisma, right? It's like you guys get riz and charisma from being alone and then reemerging in the world. It's like you do your best work inside or at, at home. Also, social media presence could be very influential because two of wands reminds me of someone who maybe doesn't have the strongest of a social life, but they're, they have a strong presence on social social media and because of their intense um, vibe on social media interest they can attract a lot of social media people um, or like for example followers or subscribers or whatever that are following them even though their real life is like maybe more like not 
Like in real life, I'm seeing you guys as so unique and different that you don't have the ability to really integrate with society that well. But I am saying that if you guys spend a lot of time alone, when you reemerge and go back out into society, you carry a charm or a charisma with you that you built up within yourself, within your cocoon. So that's another way to increase your charisma and your, your sex appeal. Um, Emperor is just indicating that, um, also I'm getting the vibe that like either you guys, if you're, if you're men watching my channel, you guys are like hyper masculine and, um, you wouldn't think that with tarot cards, right? Like I don't imagine my audience, like my target audience, right? Like with reading tarot is like this hyper masculine dudes, right? Like wanting to read tarot or like study tarot, right? But I'm getting this vibe that for some of my men watching, you guys are hyper masculine, like, and for my women watching, you have like a, you have like a dominant side to you. And also I'm seeing with my women, you attract like strong, sturdy men. Like, I think that this is basically saying that in your future, you have a strong male counterpart, especially for my female viewers who are into men, you have a strong male counterpart coming that's going to provide stability for you as well as you providing stability for them. Um, this person has a strong sense of self, right? Um, I think that maybe even if you have to break down a false sense of self in this person, and I'm not really seeing that so much with this specific person coming in, because this person coming in is very much has a strong sense of self. Um, they're really authentic or they learn to discover their authenticity with you. And they, they have a, they have a stability about them that will like leech onto you. And it might be interesting because maybe you guys are used to being the, the stable one or helping other people with their issues or working with other people. The person coming in for you that's meant for you, I'm seeing, um, is the people that are good, like marriage material basically are people who are stable for you as well. People who you feel comfortable in their presence as well. So that's all I have for you, group one with the Petrified Wood. Um, thank you guys again for letting me read for you today. It was an honor. It was a pleasure. If you guys like this reading, please like or comment below. If you um, really enjoyed this reading and you really resonated with my energy, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We're always welcoming new subscribers here at Cody Tarot. And with that said, we're going to move on to group two with the pre-night. Thank you guys again and goodbye. Hey, group two. This is if you picked the pre-night here, this lovely green stone. Um, pre-night actually is supposed to help with divinatory practices, um, from what I've read about it. Um, it actually, it gets you in touch with nature and nature spirits. And also like, I think, I don't remember if the nature spirits actually help you with the divination or it's something else, but it helps you with divinatory practices. So if you guys struggle to read your own tarot cards, uh, getting some pre-night could be beneficial. Child, magical, and bully. We are getting some interesting energies here. This is kind of mirroring the last reading. So I'm going to be curious of what um is coming through for you guys that is different than the last group um let's see let's see what messages are coming through with the tarot cards and we'll see how this affects your reading this also like i don't know if you guys do this as readers but when um i'm reading tarot sometimes i'll get First of all, cards have multiple meanings, right? Like this bully card, I could interpret it in like 5,000 different ways, but whatever ways I'm interpreting it in the moment, those are the messages that need to come through. That's kind of what's the message that needs to come through at that time, right? But you guys have watched my channel enough to know that I interpret cards in so many different ways. It all just depends on what's going on at the given time and what messages are coming through in regard to what I'm seeing in the cards. Um, with this bully card, sometimes the messages come through are messages for me as a reader reading to you. And this bully message is telling me to cool down or to cool off, right? It's basically saying that I need to slow. I'm like, I know I'm talking fast right now and I'm going to slow down for your reading, but, um, it's basically telling me to slow down for your reading because this guy is a, it's a cloud and it's blowing air on me, right? Or it's blowing air towards you. This is also a message, um, for you guys to cool down, right? Like maybe you have been very hot headed lately, or maybe you have been like irascible. Um, and the thing is that I'm seeing is, um, it's important to cool down because that's, what's going to attract people to you, right? Cooling down and getting in touch with your magical side. I'm seeing, this is my group that, um, you guys need to get a little weird with it. I think people are drawn to you when you're acting your weirdest and your most creative. Okay. So let's see what you have for your tarot cards. I'm also seeing real quick with the nine of pentacles here, you guys don't do well single. You don't do well single. You like relationships. You like to be in a relationship. You don't do well single. Um, for some of you, um, if you have a child with the queen of cups here, you have a very strong bond with your child. 
you want to watch out. You don't want it to be too unhealthy. All children need independence. And I am seeing that there could be a sense of, um, with especially with the two of cups here in reverse and the nine of pentacles here, there could be a strong bond with a child um, that is a little on the dependent side is kind of what I'm seeing. And this is just a little bit of a warning for you guys, not to call you out on parenting or anything like that, but a little bit of a warning that sometimes it's good to give your child a little bit of independence um, is kind of the vibe that I'm seeing here. But otherwise, I'm just seeing you guys really like to be in a relationship. For the two of cups here, I am seeing, I know this is what makes you irresistible, but I'm going to call out one little flaw, fault here about you guys before I go into what makes you irresistible. Because one thing that I'm seeing is this thinking about relationships all the time, because the card's in reverse, so it's kind of like what you're thinking about. If you're thinking about relationships all the time, it can repel relationships. So just keep that in mind. It's the only caveat I want to say before I get into what makes you irresistible, okay? Um, let's get one more card with the Whispers of Love card. Let's draw this one, baby. We have Choose Love. You always have a choice. Make yours with love. Yeah, I think this is important because um, no matter what you do in life, you can make loving choices and that will attract people to you, right? Um, this goes for a lot of things, right? Especially with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse here. I'm getting more messages about this Nine of Pentacles. Um, there could be a little a little bit of wealth envy here. Like um, you might actually feel like other people are doing better than you and it might cause you to be a little hateful towards them. Um, the vibe that I'm he hearing here is that if you want to attract more people, choosing the most loving path is always going to bring the, the strongest rewards to you guys. Yeah, especially with this message here, highlights your tendency to intimidate others, helps you confront the inner fears that bully you. Um, I think that just the desire in itself of wanting a relationship could in sometimes border on a fear for you guys. Um, basically, all you have to do is choose to love others. And a lot of these fears will go away, right? It'll actually attract people to you. Um, this is coming through as kind of like your power move with choose love. And it's saying you always have a choice. It's almost like you guys know that there's a moment when you're interacting with people and there's two paths you can take. And this could come up even in a split second, but you see the two paths. It's like you have one choice where you can say whatever your what's is coming on your mind. I'm seeing that could be slightly bullying tendencies, possibly for some of you. And for others of you, you have a path to choose love, right? There's a path. There's like a, there's like a path here. And you're, you want to choose love because that's what's going to make you more magnetic to others. That's what gets you in touch with your magical side. And I'm also seeing, in a way, your goofy side. Because with child magical here, with seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things, the belief that everything is possible, um, I definitely think that you guys have a goofy side that really makes you beautiful. And I'm saying goofy too because we have the four wands here, which is my card about fun and engagement and positivity in that regard. Because they're at a celebration. You're, you're, you know, you've showed up to the party. You've showed up to the party. Hopefully my camera's still recording. My battery's at low battery, so I have to check that in a second. But hopefully this is still recording. You've showed up to the party. Um, you're really there and you are just living your best life. Like you've showed up to the party, the friends are there, they're happy, there's a celebration. I think that you guys really attract people by being goofy and fun loving. Um, I think sometimes when you guys get angry, this is a sign of the bully card to cool off, to take a breath, cool off, chill out. I mean, it's a sign for me too here actually in this reading. Um, and I know I haven't been that gentle with you so far with some of the negative things, so I apologize for that. Um, normally, I try to be as gentle as possible with you guys and just in general, like give positive, uplifting messages because it's it's um, it's not necessarily the best when people hear the faults about themselves. You know, maybe you guys need a little bit of little bit of that uh, criticism or that constructive criticism. But for the most part, I'm seeing you guys thrive in, a, in an atmosphere that's fun, positive, fun, loving. I see that's where you develop your magic, right? Um, when you are goofy, when you are engaging, when you are laughing, when you are having fun, when you are at the party, when you are just having a good time, I see parties in general are really good for you guys. Going out, socializing, being around other people. With Child Magical here, it pulls in magical energy into your body. So the more social you are, the more magical you become. With Queen of Cups here, there's a vibe of, of having one foot in the ocean and one foot on solid land. I do see that you guys always want to maintain this balance. And this is something that is very alluring to others. It's like 
yeah, they're extremely magical, but they're also very grounded. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. And I also am seeing that you guys are amazing problem solvers. And that's one thing that I want to point out is that uh, people are really drawn to you by your problem solving abilities. Like if someone comes to you with a question or a problem and you like solve it for them, they're very, in, they're like, oh my God, I need this. Like no one's ever solved this problem more effectively, more efficiently, more like, like in a, I feel like you guys solve problems in a very organized way, but it's almost like a way that only you can understand, you know? Um, and it's only, it's, only, it's like in a way, not that you can only understand it. That's not what I was trying to say. It's in a way that only you can provide. That's what I was trying to say. People can understand how you solve problems because the solution is so easy for people to accept. It's like people are so, I feel like you guys are good advice givers too. I think that's another thing that makes you irresistible is you're definitely really strong at giving advice. Um, people, the advice you give makes sense. It's not like people reject it. They're like, yeah, that makes sense. I, I got to follow that, right? You guys are, you know, you guys are pretty brilliant, brilliant at dispensing advice and also solving problems in general. Um, yeah, just the thing that I'm seeing here, you guys don't like to be single. I think you think about relationships a lot. You want a relationship, um, or at least maybe you're in that phase of your life right now where you want a relationship. Um, and I wouldn't worry too much about that. I think a relationship is going to come into the picture. It's just that I'm seeing that the more loving you are and the more you choose the path of love, because I'm literally seeing a, a split moment in time where you guys are like engaging with people or the world or like other people. And there's some split moments. Like You'll have a moment where you can either say the thing that's kind of messed up or blunt or honest or truthful. And I'm not saying don't be truthful. Being truthful is important. I'm, I like to be very authentic and truthful in my own life. I'm like pride myself on that. Um, but there's also the loving way to disseminate information. There's also the loving way to speak words into the universe. And I am saying if you choose love in general, even if you have to give someone tough love, if you say it understanding that you truly love the person you're giving the advice to and you're not criticizing them in any way and you're doing it out of love, I think people are going to understand that. With Child Magical, yeah, the more goofy you guys get, the more fun you guys have, the more attractive you are. Um, let's read this like light attribute real quick. It says, seeing the potential for sacred beauty and all things. Yeah, and you guys also increase your physical beauty by doing that as well. I feel like you guys have that thing where when you laugh or when you smile, people are really drawn in. Um, people are drawn to that positive energy you admit. With the three of wands here, I am seeing that there's a strong indicator. The cards are just saying that like it's, it's going to be a journey to get a, a, a solid relationship. This is my pile where you guys have probably been single for a while and you think about love a lot and you think, when's it going to happen to me? With the three of wands here, I am seeing there's a feeling that you also think about like, when is my person coming in, right? Like, when is this coming in? When is my manifest manifestation going to manifest? I am seeing that you guys are doing the right stuff when you're manifesting the person. It's just not divine timing. Like this person needs to come in at the right time. Um, with Queen of Cups here, I am seeing that um, also I think that your your children find you irresistible. I think they think you're an amazing parent. I think they think you're wonderful. Um, I really think that they wouldn't have any other parent. So back to the, my message in the beginning of the reading that I talked about with your guys' um, parenting, with it being a little dependent. I'm just seeing a very close bond with you and your child that I think that it might help with the child to gain some independence, if that makes sense. But at the same time, I do see such a close bond between you two, a very loving, connected bond between you and this child or these children. If you haven't had kids yet, I'm seeing strong bonds with you and your children. I don't see you guys having children where you just kind of ignore them or, you know, you have like, um, you know, like they're, they're constantly... Um, with like someone else or someone else is taking care of them or you hired someone to take care of them or something like that. I see a very strong commitment with your kids. I see you very involved in their life. It's almost to the point where I just want to say, let them have some independence or when it's time for them to grow up and to be of the age where they need to get that independence. It's important to, it's an important growth step for your children to have that independence, right? Um, to have things on their own that they have without you involved, right? Um, so keep that in mind. Um, for a lot of you, you haven't had kids yet, right? You're you're still watching, you're still young, and you're watching this channel. But I I just see that you guys are gonna have a strong bond with your children. Um, yeah. What else? Let's see what else is here. Um, hopefully my camera didn't pause mid video and it kept recording because I got a low battery notice, and so hopefully this video, hopefully this um reading, you know, you guys got to hear all the messages. 
Um, I don't think I'm going to redo it either. I think I'm just going to leave if the If it blocked out the messages, I'm just going to leave it like that because I think that it's meant to be like that. Um, but yeah, just because the reading blocked out like that, let me pull a couple more cards for you guys, just in case you'll get extra cards. Maybe if it didn't cut out and, um, if it did cut out, we'll, we'll give you some extra vibes. So let's get some extra cards here. And then I also want to cover physical characteristics about what makes you irresistible. Okay. Let's get some extra cards. Oh my gosh. Queen of cups twice. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Let things let things come to you is kind of the message with that queen of cups three of wands twice this see this is what happens with tarot it's like doesn't want me to pull extra cards which is giving me the same things that i knight of wands there we go okay so three of wands is basically saying that okay this is like saying let things come to you your manifestation will come to you with the three of wands here upright um with the knight of wands it's a strong indication that um Oh yeah, this is interesting. The your angels or guides or whatever spiritual force is looking out for you is pushing away um, one night stands. So I feel like a lot of one night stands are not going to happen for you guys. A lot of people that you might be attracted to that aren't attracted to you, they're they're uh, they're not attracted to you because they know you're a relationship type, not a one night stand type. And I can definitely see here with this two of cups, you guys want a relationship. You want something long term. You want something committed. You want something like devoted. Even though you guys are like not in a relationship right now, or you want a relationship, you don't like to be alone. Um, I am saying that uh, like you're going to attract when the time comes a stronger committed relationship versus a whole bunch of hookups or one night stands. Um, yeah. With the queen of this queen of cups just means let things come to you. Right. And because it's in reverse, it's saying like, let your, let your thoughts even come to you. Like don't force thinking about anything. Like if you guys find yourself in a tailspin thinking about when are they coming in? When are they coming in? When's my next person? When's my next person coming in? When's my relationship? What is my relationship? Um, you know, and you're thinking like, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. Realize that your, your thoughts are kind of spinning around. Right. Um, and it's important to like, take a hands-off approach with your thoughts, not fuel them, let them kind of peter out on their own, right? They're going to run out of steam eventually, right? Your thoughts are just going to kind of run out of steam on their own. Let them run out of steam and let yourself have a clear head for, for a little bit of time, you know? Um, I think it'll help get some other things coming into your life that could put you on the right path to finding your person, right? Sometimes we need a break from thinking about the problem. And you guys probably know this because you are amazing problem solvers, but it's like sometimes we need a break of thinking about the problem to have the solution come to us. And I know you guys are so heady people, like with the Queen of Cups here, this is a strong vibe with like this woman, I'll show you why, because she's focused on this cup, this ornate cup. And I see this cup is almost like a puzzle and she's focused on it, she's focused on solving the puzzle. And so it's one of those things too, where it's like, you guys are good problem solvers, but it's like, and it's good to use your head in those situations, but it's almost like you're not necessarily meant to solve your own problems or you're not meant to solve your own relationship problems, if that makes sense. Okay. Physical traits. First thing I'm seeing with these, all three of these women, they have long flowy hair. One's brown, blonde, and redhead. So I think that a lot of you watching have different color hair that are watching this. Um, but I definitely think that, or you guys dye your hair often and people like all the different hairstyles that you do. So your hair changes often. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking physical traits, why people find you irresistible is because your hair has a flowy, natural kind of flowy component to it. And it's, and it, I'm seeing that if you guys had long hair, it would like more people would be attracted to you. They like the fact that your hair is long. Um, the other thing too, is people's sense of humor. People love your sense of humor. They love the goofy side of you. That's where your magic grows from your own ability to manifest grows from your sense of humor and your positivity and your ability to have fun with others. So keep that in mind. That's your power move. Um, the more fun you have with others, the more ability you, you, the more you have the ability to manifest things in your environment. Bully with this, this guy blowing, it's just saying, cool off, take a break, cool off. Um, don't let things get too hot, right? Um, you can see these different candles here and him blowing out the candles. It's kind of like saying that like when you blow out your own anger, you're also making a wish because the three of wands is the wish coming in card. Um, when you blow out your own heatedness, when you blow out your own temper, when you blow out your own thoughts that are out of control, right? Um, that's when your wishes will come in, right? It's like you have to, you're heating up, you're lighting the candles on the birthday cake you know, but you have to blow out the candles to make the wish come true, right? So that's, I'm going to end your guys' reading with that sentiment. 
And with that said, thank you guys for letting me read for you. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. It was a pleasure. It was an honor. Hopefully the full reading is here. <laughs> uh, my phone had a low battery. I'm going to have to take a break before the other groups and recharge it. Anyway, um, if you guys like this reading, like or comment below. If you really enjoyed this reading, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We're always welcoming new subscribers here at Cody Tarot. And with that said, thank you guys again for letting me read for you. We'll see you later. And we're moving on to group three with the Smoky Quartz. Bye, guys. Hey, group three, let's find out what makes you irresistible. So here's your Smoky Quartz crystal that you chose. This is if you pick the Smoky Quartz group. Uh, let's get started with a archetype card or a few archetype cards. So let's get an archetype card to see what makes group three irresistible. I normally film these groups back to back, but I had to take a break and watch some TV because my phone was dead. And I filmed these on my phone, so let's see. Let's, okay, this one wants to come out. We have Liberator. Let's get another one for group three. What makes group three irresistible? We have Prostitute. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's get some other messages. Let's get some from the tarot cards. need to come out to give me messages for group three and what makes them irresistible to others. Okay, let's see. Okay, we have the devil, the six of cups, the wheel of fortune, the knight of cups in reverse, and the page of cups upright. And I'm going to get one more. I'm going to pull a Whispers of Love card for you guys. Yep, this one. We have Love Endures. It says, love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation. First thing I want to bring up... Um, so this is similar to a, a one of the other groups. I can't remember which group it was now, but you have a familiar vibe to you um, with the Six of Cups here. There's something familiar about you to other people. Um, with the Devil and Prostitute here, I think something that makes you really irresistible to others is... I feel like you guys have a very alluring way about you. Um, I feel like you guys have a very distinct sex appeal. Um... The most interesting thing that's engaging me about this prostitute card, I mean, this card has obvious connotations, right? Because it says prostitute and we have the devil here. Um, there are some obvious connotations that um, there's a feeling of being attached to sex or being attached to sex in a way that could be like addictive. I feel like people with this prostitute card, I feel like they... <laughs> The vibe that I'm getting is like, this kind, This is kind of sleazy, but it's like they would not mind paying for your love and attention is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Um, with the devil card here, it's indicating that if you guys wanted to, you definitely could be in positions where, you know, you are receiving gifts, a lot of gifts for your love. You are receiving a lot of like favors for your love. There's a strong vibe here that people want to take care of you. Like they want to lavish you with gifts, lavish you with abundance, pay for your love, pay for your attention. I think something that makes you sexy and what draws a specific type of person to you, honestly, is the fact that you seem like 
first of all, your sex appeal is very distinct and very, um, like, lusty is the vibe that I'm getting. It's almost like you guys have this appeal that makes people want to support you, right? People are like, oh my gosh, I just want to give them things, or I want to give them money, I want to give them things. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting, especially with Wheel of Fortune, just being very literal with the aspect of fortune. Um, there's such a strong vibe of like, and the devil here, you know, in the money and the prostitute card, like she's naked, but she's just covered in money, right? I feel like people also think something that draws people to you is um, also with the page of wands, your sense of style is coming through too. Like your sense of style and your ability to assess situations on a psychological level. But other than that, you have an appeal where people want to support you. People want to give you things. People want to um, pay for things for you. They want to like, like they want to kind of take, get your attention by like giving you offers of things, right? Um, with Liberator here, it says freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns. Um, one of the strong things that I'm seeing here with Liberator, with this woman holding this torch out, right? I feel like you guys provide light for others. Um, there's a feeling that you give yourself to others often, and that's why people want to give to you. It's like you provide the spiritual light or the nourishing light to liberate people from their, their situations. And with Prostitute here, I'm getting a strong vibe that other people want to support you financially for those liberations. Um, also, I feel like you are so open um, when it comes to people's preferences and people's, how do I put this? Um, there are like kinks and their desires and stuff. You're so open with them. You let people be themselves. And that in, of it, in and of itself, like lets people be however they want to be around you, right? And so the fact that you're so open with them and you're available for them, um, there's a strong vibe that like, they just want to lavish. It's like, there's a very much of an accepted quality here. It's like people feel like you accept them fully. There's something about how accepting you are of others that makes people feel liberated, right? It's like they don't have to um, be a different person or they don't have to adapt to you, right? Like you're adapting to them. So people feel like, oh, they're comfortable. People are comfortable with you because you don't try to change them. You just kind of accept them as they are. And in that way, people feel very seen and very heard. And I definitely think that people want to give to you. People want to give you money. People want to give you abundance. People want to give you wealth. With the devil card here, I am seeing there is a strong element of magnetism. Um, you guys have a very magnetic presence. Um, and with the devil representing an earth sign, representing Capricorn, there's a very earthy energy here. And I think success plays an uh, important part in your sex appeal. So... It is either that you guys seem successful and people want to contribute to that success by providing you with resources and money and um, gifts and stuff like that, or people want to see you succeed on a very um, level of like finances and career and stuff like that. And so they want to give you a leg up. They want to help you in that regard. So um, I think that no matter where you are at in your life, whether you're successful or whether you are um, not successful currently and you're trying to get success... The point is people want to provide you with resources if you're on your way to success, right? People want to see that you're working towards success. And if you are, I think people will provide you with wealth, abundance, resources, um, especially because you're so open and accepting of them. It's like people want to see someone who's so kind and considerate um, to others and that doesn't judge other people. They want to see that, that person succeed. It seems like a lot of people in this world want to see you succeed, to be honest. With love endures, it says love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation. I definitely feel that people love you, like, honestly and truly. I mean, I know we have the prostitute card. There's a strong element of money. And we also have the devil card, which gives indications that, um, like, just because... And also, just because these are negative cards doesn't mean that's how you are. It's just showing me little archetypes for how the, the the process of how people care for you is perceived, right? I think people, people see you as someone that is so giving of yourself. Like, you're so giving yourself that, like, people just want to give back to you, right? I think with this liberator, with her, just with her, okay, let me show you this card. 
her her light is just so completely outstretched with her her arm you know she's just offering it completely and she's lifting it up kind of right indicating that she's making kind of an offering um it's just the energy here for your guys' sex appeal and what makes you irresistible people like to see you working towards something um people like to see that you're trying to achieve something. I honestly think that people are going to want to support you if you show good work ethic is kind of the vibe that I'm seeing. And also people are going to want to support you. And there's also just a strong magnetism. I'm going to be honest. It's also the fact that people want to support you if you're working towards something. But there's a strong magnetism here. I also think people feel like you're lucky. People feel like you're lucky. Um, for some of you with prostitute here, it could be people feel like you're like you're easy, like you're easy to get to know, you're easy to see, you're easy to um, entice, you're easy to flirt with. Um, I think people find you like easily accessible, which is a good thing in this case, because it means that like, first of all, you openly accept them and they find you really easy to communicate with, right? It's like, it's very easy for people to communicate with you. I'll tell you that. And that's something that makes you very, and also you, this devil card is giving me strong magnetism vibes. So I definitely feel like there's a feeling of being like for you guys, what makes you resistible is you're very easy to communicate with. You're very accepting of other people's little quirks, behaviors. And this goes even into the bedroom of other people's fetishes and um, personal habits when it comes to things in the bedroom. Um, because I definitely think that you guys let people express themselves freely around you. And that makes people feel comfortable and makes them feel like you're a really good person. Because we see this again here with the Six of Cups, this feeling of comfortability, home, um, stuff like that. People just feel really comfortable around you. With Wheel of Fortune, people also find you very lucky. They feel like if they're around you, if they're in your aura, then they're going to achieve luck and success in their lives. It's kind of like when they buy you a gift or when they give you some money or something like that, they feel like they're investing in their future. It's like you're a, a good luck charm. And if it's like you're a little lucky Buddha or something, if you rub Buddha's belly, you're going to get luck or something like that. You know, I get a strong vibe that like if people get near you or they get close to you, they feel like they're going to get lucky like their luck's going to turn around right and that's something that makes you irresistible with um knight of cups here i see this interesting di dynamic of the knight of cups moving towards the wheel of fortune and then the page of cups turning away assessing the situation there could be a little bit of a disconnect sometimes with people with romantic partners i feel like the more romantic partners that are drawn to your luck the more it makes you guys assess like your capabilities and potentials, right? Rather than like acting on them, so to say, so to speak, right? Um, Page of Wands is an analyzing card. If you look closely, he is dressed to the nines, right? That's why I got the fashion message from that you guys dress really well. But like, he's also staring at the staff. He's just observing it, right? He's like looking at it. He's admiring it. Um, he's kind of just analyzing it in, in general. And the thing I'm seeing with these two cards, turn their backs turn to each other. There's a strong vibe. The more people who are attracted to you, the more you'll start to be analyzing your abilities. So it's, it's a catch-22 here where people want to push you into success. But the more people that are drawn to you or attracted to you, the more you start to think like, hmm, like where am I really going? Or what is my real potential? Or what is my real attitudes? Or what is my real abilities, right? And it's interesting because I see that like in moments of periods of isolation or loneliness or when people are not drawn to you at specific times, I think the universe brings these times in for you specifically so you can give you a little kick in the butt to keep moving. But even that, even that, like once you start moving and you start acting and being more successful with your endeavors, that just draws more people to you, right? So it is kind of like a catch-22. There is kind of like a push-pull dynamic here. It's definitely something that I think that you guys have learned in this life to have a give and take with like um, in the most simplest terms to explain this in this reading, it would be like, should I focus on my goals or should I focus on people and relationships? Right. And sometimes I think for you guys, they feel separate or they feel like there's a push pull dynamic between your relationships and your personal goals and what you're working on. But that's only because um, people's energy makes you reevaluate um, your goals essentially. Cause I think that it's one of those things where when more people's energy comes in, it's like they're they're sharing information with you. And the more people that share information with you, it makes you reassess your priorities because everybody has an opinion, right? And you're absorbing all these different people's opinions. And so it can it that can derail you from your path. Um, not that that's necessarily a bad thing. That can be a good thing. Um, 
the main thing that I'm seeing is to kind of stick with like your own path is kind of the vibe that I'm seeing. Um, and to be honest, I'm not seeing that so much in the cards. It could be a combination of, um, that's just kind of like my own insight. It could be a combination, honestly, of like listening to other people's opinions and following your own path. And it might just be the flow of the universe, the natural flow of the universe. You know, when a lot of people come into your life, you have a lot of admirers, you have a lot of people supporting you, helping you. That just might be a time where you need to be reevaluating what's coming next in your life, right? That might be a time where you need to, um, be evaluating like, okay, where am I going to go from here? What do I want to do? I'm taking in all these people's different opinions and in, in under consideration. So what am I going to do with those opinions or what, what are my opinions in comparison to their opinions? Stuff like that. Um, it might just be a time when you're being social or more people are being traveling towards you, towards your luck and, uh, you know, um, fortune, fortune giving abilities. Cause I do see you guys provide fortune for others. Um, and I don't think you do this consciously. I think this is something that is unconscious. I think just people communicating and talking with you, good luck, lucky things happen to them. Um, but then there are times where you're more isolated. The wheel will turn, right? And there will be times where people start to fade away because you're too stagnant and you're just evaluating things, right? These will be moments where you've gotten too stuck in evaluation mode and people will start to fall away because remember, they're attracted to your success abilities, right? They're attracted to the fact that you're on a path and you're moving towards a goal. So the thing is, is that's the time when it's um, it's important for you guys to get into a new goal oriented mindset and like get a new project, do something different, start something new, work towards something, right? And it doesn't have to be anything like exactly in the realm of like stereotypical success, right? Like you don't have to get a nine to five that pays really good and just start grinding away and collecting that money. You know, you could do that if that's what you want to do. But with the page of wands, it's just saying you need to set some kind of a goal, some kind of a project, some kind of a passion, something like that. And the more you are attracted to that passion, the more the wheels start spinning again and more people are drawn into you because they're more drawn into that success oriented mindset. So yeah, it's kind of a, a dual dichotomy here where on one hand, you're getting a lot of support from others. A lot of people are buying you things, giving you gifts, stuff like that. And the cool thing about that is that usually in these moments, people are really attracted to you. They're attracted to what you're doing, what you're working towards. Um, they're attracted to your goals. They're attracted to your passion. But the thing is, is when you start to rely too much on the energy from other people, I noticed people start, that's when people start to fade away. It's like you start to rely on the energy from people and they start to back off, right? They start to be like, you know what? I'm not going to put too much attention on this person. Um, it's just like your light starts to dim with this liberator here with the torch. It's almost like your flame starts to go out or something like that. And that's where starting a new goal. And that's where when you're reevaluating things and you're thinking of all the different things, picking a path. And I think it'll be natural because the thing is when the people start to fade away from you, that's where the path becomes clearer. That's where your goals become clear. That's where you the, the path ahead of you is emerges, right? And I think that's when you start to get that success again. Once you start going on a new path or a new journey or a new um, destination and you're going towards that goal, that's when more people start flocking to you. I do think later in life, you'll find a, a nice balance between these two. And for my older viewers, you've already have found this balance. Um, there's a strong balance here and a, a, and a kind of a... That's why I'm saying with you guys, there's a there's like an oscillation or a push-pull with your romantic attraction and what makes you irresistible, right? It's based on the fact that you're accomplishing something and you're working towards something, but it's also based on the fact... Sorry, I totally blanked on what I'm going to say. It's based on the fact that you're accomplishing and working towards something for sure. And I also just want to say that it's also based on the fact that like... Yeah, it's like when you're when the moments when you're really evaluating the most and you get stuck in your head and you're just worried about what to do or you don't know what to do or you're thinking about what to do or you're processing these things. I don't think those times or you should view those times as negative, right? Um necessarily. Um, because you're you are surrounded by people who care about you, even though they're slowly fading away, right? This is, has this this group has like an oscillation, right? It like starts with like you know, with some kind of passion or project, right? Which then draws people to you, right? And then once more people are drawn to you, you lose a little bit of passion for the project. You start to evaluate more what you want to do next in life. And that repels people. Once the people are gone, you get the clarity you need, the aha moment in order to start the new passion project, which draws people in again. There's a nice little oscillation vibe that I'm getting with this group that goes with your irresistibility. Um, and this is reading is going a little bit beyond irresistibility into the 
the the patterns of your attraction. You might realize in certain points of your life, you have a lot of people that are attracted to you. And then at other points in your life, you have no one. And that's just the idea of this pattern, right? Um, ideally, what would happen, especially financially for you guys, I'm feeling like bringing that up just because we have the money and the prostitute card and the devil card here, which can talk about materialism. Um, there's a strong vibe here of learning to rely on both other people and learning to rely on yourself, right? So it's not just one or the other. It's like at some moments when you're lost and confused about your goal, but you're still riding the passion of something else and that that project's fading away, but people are drawn to you. It's like relying on those people's energies. And then sometimes it's about starting a new goal and relying on those new goals those new ideas, that new destiny that you're creating for yourself to rely on that to bring in abundance for you as well. Um, yeah, overall, the Wheel of Fortune here, I see the universe is really taking care of you. Um, the Devil card is an, a sign, an urge to not be too greedy. Like, try not to be too greedy. I see that you guys might be able to, you might fall into that trap sometimes. And if you get too greedy or you take the gifts that you're given, like, um, you take advantage of those. Um, I'm seeing that the 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 universe kind of stops providing them, right? It's like a humble attitude is kind of what attracts these blessings. I want to go over this card one more time. Um, this card says, love endures. Love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation. Um, I really do think that you're the people who are the most... Um, attracted to you and the people who are going to be the most long-term committed partners are people who are going to stick with you whether you have tons of admirers or whether you have a goal, right? So in times where you're like stagnant and you don't have any projects going on and you're evaluating, these are people that will stick with you. So I'm seeing that you attract a lot of people, to be honest, um, in these in this, in these periods. Like you just have, it seems like everyone's like positively predisposed to you, right? Um but I am saying you have specific people that do stick by you no matter what. And that's one really cool thing. I definitely see with this Love Endures card, you have a strong like aspect of loyalty. And your strongest relationships are going to come from your most loyal people that stick with you no matter what. So um, you might, guys, also with the Wheel of Fortune, you might find yourselves in periods where you're not that attractive. You're not that irresistible. But I do think you're going to have like one or two friends that have always been by you, even in those moments where, when people are not drawn to you and you're your public image doesn't seem to be as active as it as it has been in the past, um, mainly because you're coming into a period where you're just about to birth a new way to create success, right? Um, with that page, of the wands card, right? It's just, yeah. Um, I think in time, what I was trying to say earlier is in time, you'll find a nice dynamic balance between both things. Like you'll find a nice dynamic balance between goals social life and evaluating that will create kind of, it's almost like they synergize as you get older it's like the, the the ups and the downs kind of even out as you get older or they synergize or they start working together so don't think it's always going to be this back and forth energy they're going to start synergizing and working together as you get older um for some of you um this could even be dealing with fame in of itself like you guys could be famous um in general um some of you, um, also this, this won't be for all of you, but some of you could even with prostitute here, you could get famous for sex work or something like that, or working on only fans or something like that. Um, yeah, you just, the main appeal that you guys have besides the dynamic that I mentioned, very familiar vibe very familiar vibe. People feel like they met someone from home when they meet you. And that's because you're so accepting. It's not necessarily that they resonate with your energy so much that you're the familiar one that they, they're like, wow, this person's so familiar to me. Like you remind me of someone from home. It's more that you make them feel at home. Does that make sense? Like we had a previous group. I can't remember which one it was, if it was group one or two. And the, and they kind of remind, they reminded people of home, right? Like people looked at them and they thought, oh, they, they, something about them was universal in the way that they were received, if that makes sense. For you guys, it's the way you're receiving others. It's like you treat people with that universality where you make other people feel like they're at home, if that makes sense. It's like, you're so accepting. I feel like you guys are very accepting. 
Um, you're very caring and you definitely liberate people, right, from their shackles because you let them, you kind of let them be themselves. You know, people feel like, oh, I don't have to put on a front with this person. I can really just be myself. I don't have to put on a role or anything like that. Um, it's similar to one of the other groups too, actually. Um, but yeah, uh, that's going to be your reading for today. Um, if you guys like that reading, please like or comment below. I really enjoyed reading for you guys today. It was an honor and it was a pleasure. If you really enjoyed the reading, feel free to subscribe to my channel. We're always welcoming new subscribers here at Cody Tarot. And with that said, I'm going to end your reading there and I will see you guys in the next pick a card. Moving on to group four with the blue Chalcedony. Bye guys. Hey, group four, this is if you picked the blue Chalcedony. It's kind of like a river. It kind of reminds me of like a little river running through a rock. Okay, so, or a cloud, if you think of clouds too. Okay, let's get into your reading. My energy definitely slowed down. I had to take a break in between groups and I lost my little burst of talkativeness. Um, so I'm going slower, but the readings are longer. So probably the same amount of information, to be honest. It's just that... When I talk fast, the inner the messages, um, you know, can be conveyed in a shorter amount of time. And if I talk slower, the messages are conveyed in a longer amount of time. So, okay, let's see what we have. Child Orphan. We got a lot of the child cards today out of the archetype deck. Let's see what, okay, ooh, this one wants to come out. Engineer. Oh, cool. Okay, let's get some tarot cards. I might have to get my water too. My throat's a little dry. Let's see. Let's see what's coming up in your reading. Not really getting any initial messages with Child, Orphan, and Engineer. I think I'm gonna have to pull tarot cards and look over the, the cards real quick to see if any messages are coming through for those two cards. With some of the other groups, I got immediate messages with chat, with the archetype cards, but this group, it's hard to figure out what is going on. The one thing I'm, I'm, I'm seeing mainly is that you guys could have scientific abilities or you could be, because um, I'm seeing this kid sitting on the the, the world right here with the, the universe, and I'm seeing this other guy um, who seems very cerebral, seems like one of the characters in, like, um, you know, Minority Port, the psychics that are, okay, let's see, yeah, psychic, hi, and priestess, okay, <laughs> sorry, I got really excited there, um, okay, okay, let's see, I'm gonna pull one more card, Whispers of Love, and then we'll get into your reading, Yeah, with the high priestess here, first of all, with the, I'm just, this bald head makes me think of a psychic. I don't know why. I know not all bald people are psychics, um, but this bald guy is reminding me of a psychic. You guys yourselves um, might have like, for honestly, I feel like for some of my female viewers, you have like part of your head shaved or something like that. And then for my male viewers, some of my male viewers are actually, that are watching this actually are bald or you guys shave your head. Um, let's see, what let's see with this this Whispers of Love card says, it says, the only thing that is real is love. Shift your focus back to love. The, the message that's coming through here is the only thing that is real is love. It makes me feel like you guys are really experts at dealing with realities, like actual realities in the real world, which is interesting because you're so intuitive. There's a strong vibe that you guys are dealing with reality. So I feel like you guys have scientific abilities with the actual reality of the situation. So you guys might deal with um, like physics or chemistry or biology or something like that. Sciences that deal with the actual real world, you guys actually might be like, you could even be like nurses or work in scientific fields, which is funny, you're, you've come to a tarot reading. I don't normally associate people who are like very rational or scientific with like tarot cards. But I definitely think you guys have that ability. Like, I think you work with realities, right? I think you might also have a spiritual side because you're super incredibly intuitive, right? Um, I think that you use your intuition in honor of your scientific abilities. So I think you are able to use the spirit world and your belief in things and your spirituality in order to receive downloads about the reality of life, right? The reality of like biology, like what's happening with the animal world, but reality of physics, like how do things move in counterparts and components, right? Mathematics, you receive downloads to, to deal with problems dealing with mathematics. I think you guys are very intellectual, 
With Child Orphan here, I think that um, one thing that makes you very... First of all, all these things are making you irresistible, right? I think people are very drawn to your intelligence specifically. So a lot of the other groups, like, yeah, they're smart. Um, I haven't read group five yet, but a lot of the other groups, they're smart. But I think it's particularly this group, people are drawn specifically to your intelligence. Like, I think in one of the other groups, we had someone who was, people were drawn to them for their problem solving abilities, which is a, which is a certain kind of intelligence as well. But I think you guys just know a lot. You're incredibly intuitive and you apply that to read the real situation. Um, not necessarily in like solving interpersonal problems of other people. You're just naturally like scientifically gifted is kind of what I'm seeing. Um, I also think with this kid sitting on this planet and there's all these other planets around him, you guys might get a lot of your downloads. You might feel like a lot of your downloads come from the heavens or even outer space. I think some of you even feel like a lot of the information you receive intuitively comes from aliens, that like aliens are feeding you messages about our world and technology and stuff like that. I think um, you guys are just incredibly gifted as far as like intelligence goes. I think you probably have the highest IQ of any of the groups today. Um, with Child Orphan, I'm gonna read the light attribute. It says, independence based on learning to go it alone, conquering fear of surviving. Yeah. There's a strong feeling that there's, there's two feelings here. I feel like, especially with the five of swords, oh my gosh, I didn't even notice that connection. Um, okay. So you guys strong independent streak. It's, it's interesting that you came to this reading because I feel like you guys are going to really resonate with one, like being a loner, right? Like being alone, being a loner. Um, I feel like you guys thrive when you're alone, especially intellectually. It's like you have to disconnect from others to really thrive, um, with this five of swords here, this is kind of the epitome of what's going on. We have this guy who's collected all these swords, right? And all these other people are wandering around lost in the background. Like they don't have their swords anymore or they drop their swords at his feet. A lot of these other people in your environment and people around you have given up intellectually, right? They've given up their intellectual abilities. They've dropped their swords, which swords represent the intellect. They represent thoughts and tarot communication as well. Um, and in this regard, you're the only one standing here with three swords in your hands and then also two swords at your feet because people forget these problems, these, um, intellectual problems. And it seems like you guys just kind of accumulate them or you kind of, you get downloads about them or something and you just understand them very clearly. Um, there is strong, strong, especially with the King of Swords, he's a master of intellect, right? He's a master of communication and intelligence. Um, you guys are just very intelligent. Um, that's all there is to it. Um, it's not all there is to it, but that's most of it, to be honest. You're very intelligent and very extremely intuitive. Um, I honestly think, um, if you guys study Myers-Briggs, I definitely think, I don't know if anyone knows Myers-Briggs, but I'm, I'm thinking of those, um, archetypes right now. Um, the archetype of either INTP or an INTJ is coming through very strongly for this group. Um, possibly even ENTJ or ENTP, but like an ENTJ or ENTP that's very introverted. There's strong vibes that you guys get a lot of your energy when you're alone or you do your best intellectual processing while you're alone. Um, yeah, and I think that you guys are in strong communication with alien intelligence, if that makes sense. Um, for others of you that don't believe in aliens, you're getting messages from a higher spiritual being. So that would be either your angels, God himself, the universe. But for a lot of you, I have a strong feeling that a lot of you believe in aliens and you have a strong feeling that a lot of your intelligence is not of this world. Um, that you're getting, I feel like you guys have felt like aliens too amongst people, um, or just different in general. Um, it almost makes me a little sad, but at the same time, I know you guys aren't sad. That's the thing. It's like, I think outsiders might, one thing that makes you irresistible too, and it's not necessarily irresistible, but makes people attracted to you in general. Um, people feel like you're different or you are separate from society. And I think a lot of people want to be your friend because they want to integrate with you and they want to bring you into social interaction is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. And for sometimes I see you guys thinking this is like, um, it's interesting because people see you in a kind of a sad light. 
um, in this way, certain types, so certain social people see you in kind of a sad light, like, oh, I wish they had more friends, or I wish they got out more, or I wish they were more engaged, like engaged with the world, you know? Um, but the thing is, I even see some of these people when they approach you, like if you guys are working on something intellectually, I can see you guys thinking these people like interfering with you um, is kind of like annoying. Is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Like you guys just want to work on your projects, it seems like a little bit. And you don't want that outside influence, even though I think sometimes it's almost like a bipolar thing where I feel like sometimes, because we have another nine here in reverse and um, it's showing up a little bit as like, um, you know, like wanting to be alone often, but then at the same time, when you're finally sick of being alone, like just needing that extroverted attention and almost it not being there when, when you guys need it most is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. But I do think that it would be good to probably, this will increase your attractiveness too as well, like increase your irresistibility. Um, first of all, sharing your intellectual insights with others, like especially when they're relevant, like if people, it's relevant to someone's life, I think you guys sometimes keep things bottled up, um, even when it's relevant to the conversation. Like you think that, oh, they're not gonna understand this, even though it kind of fits in. Like, I feel like you guys have a good sense of conversation, to be honest, like you know when you can place like, sentences or information into the argument or into the conversation in order for it to be socially cohesive you just feel like people aren't going to understand but if you just place it in in those moments where your intuition is telling you to you can make some strong social connections with your um and meet people who are like-minded as well the thing that i was going back to what i was saying though um, with the nine of wands in reverse, I do feel like it's good every once in a while to take up some people on their offers of social interaction, right? I know you guys turn down people a lot um, and hanging out with them and stuff like that. But every once in a while, when that really social person comes along and invites you out to something, um, it's good every once in a while to go out and engage with those social people, right? Um, just because it's before it gets to the breaking point, right? That's the vibe that I'm getting. It's like, I know it's kind of annoying, but it's good to just be social every once in a while before it gets to the breaking point because you guys know yourself and if you spend too much time alone you, and you get to the breaking point, right, where you're just so sick of being alone, then you're going to want to be social and if no one's there, that's when you guys feel your most crushing feelings of loneliness, right? So what, makes you, what will make you more irresistible is if you spend a little bit of social time with people and even if you just give people an inch right? Um, you know, there's some of those social people that want to take a mile, right? Like, let's hang out tomorrow. You know, it's like, no, I need my space. Like I need time alone to like process what I'm going through and like all the thoughts that I'm thinking and my intellectual interests are like top priority. Right. But, um, I do see that hanging out with people every so often, especially those people that can let you be in your own space, you know, um, are really is going to be really healthy for you, especially if you can cultivate a few close friendships where you can hang out with people every once in a while. And instead of waiting till it gets to the breaking point where you feel like you need someone and then at that point not having anyone because it, it's almost like it has to be on their terms. And I know that's unfair. I know that's sad. I know it's like when you guys want to hang out with someone, you should be able to just hang out with someone when you want. But I'm getting the vibe that um, because you guys are so to yourselves and you have such like your own intellectual power that stems from within you and it's, it makes you kind of separate from others, um, there's a strong vibe that it's almost going to have to come from an outside source, right? The socialization is coming from an outside source. So when that happens, take it, especially if you have a moment where it's like, I could take a break from my projects. I could take a break from my studies. I could take a break from being connected to the all allness around me, you know? It's almost like it's good to go out with those people and experience things. Because I see that also you'll build over time a sense of mystery um, about yourself. And I think that's something else that makes you irresistible now is you already have this sense of mystery. So things in general right now that you don't necessarily have to work on. I know I'm bringing up things you should work on and stuff like that. I'm just trying to like give you a way out of this last minute breakdown where you're like, lonely and you're like, where's my friends? <laughs> you know, it's like there's this strong vibe of just like finding someone you know, when they come along and like engage, like letting that be the activity, if that makes sense. Um, and then going back to your projects. But the things that make you irresistible right now that you don't have to do any work to do that are just making you irresistible, mystery. You have a strong sense of mystery. People find you mysterious and they're in, they're intrigued. Um, there's, there's two types of social people that are, that are attracted to you. One, kind of feels sorry for you and thinks you need to get out more and they're going to help you and, 
almost in a way of like a like a oh I'm gonna help this person be more social like it's a good thing and uh, I, I really want to be a good person to help them get out of their shell, right? There's going to be those people that pity you and stuff like that. Um, but there's also people who find you mysterious and intriguing, and they're going to be drawn into you because they want to get to know you more, right? So you have two types of people that are kind of coming for you a little bit that are drawn to you, um, that find you irresistible. With King of Swords, especially if you share your in, share your intelligence when the intuitive moment arises, you guys are mind-blowingly intelligent. I'm going to tell you that right now. People are going to have a hard time grasping what you're saying, but that's a good thing. I think people are intimidated in a good way. They're like, wow. Especially people who know that intelligence is power, they're going to want you by their side, right? With King of Wands here, this is also mirroring this Nine of Wands a little bit. Um, it's just saying that like, you might not feel ready to engage socially with others, but the thing is, is like, it's better. It's just, it's good to do it. Even if you don't feel ready, King of Wands upright is a card that always feels ready, alert, ready for anything in his outer world to manifest or happen. He's ready to take action, right? You guys might feel like you're never prepared or you're never, you don't have enough information or you don't know what's going to happen. So you don't do it. I'm seeing this King of Wands is represented more as a block for you guys. And it's more, I think it also is representing a partner to a future partner. You're going to have someone in your life who is going to stimulate a readiness in you, right? It's going to make you internally ready. Um, Cause King of Wands in general, well, as a block is how I'm reading it right now. It just means that you feel like you're never ready. And it feels like when something, an emergency comes up or something happens, you put off doing it or something like that. Um, which is interesting. This adds to your mystery, which also is making you irresistible to those specific people. But I think that if also if you guys want to make your projects more reality, the jumping into things when the time is right is going to help tremendously. I'm learning that sense of timing, even though you guys are very intuitive. You're I feel like you're very intuitive on an intellectual level, like downloading intellectual information. But as far as like the readiness and the willingness to jump into an activity, the knowledge of knowing the right time to do that. I think you guys could work on that a little more. Um, yeah, but the thing is, is you guys are already irresistible enough. The High Priest is also another card of mystery. I'm seeing a lot of like common themes for you guys instead of like a whole bunch of disparate elements. Like there's just general main themes. Like your mystery makes you irresistible. Your intelligence makes you irresistible. The fact that you're willing to take on intellectual problems that other people have left at the, you know, people find that really attractive. It's like, you know, if someone, if you're, if someone asked you something and you solve, like you say like, oh, that math problem is this and this and this, or you say, oh, that chemistry fact is this and this and this, or that physics problem is this and this and this. And people are like, you know, I gave up on physics and chemistry in 10th grade, <laughs> you know, like I gave up on it in high school. Uh, I'm glad you have it or you picked it up because at least I don't have to do it. That's kind of the vibe here. It's like people feel like, well, at least someone's paying attention to these things, right? That's the vibe that I get from people. It's like, wow, at least someone's paying attention to these things. Like, that's good. We have all our bases covered. Because I think a lot of people that are drawn to you are very teamwork focused people, which is interesting because you guys are very mysterious and aloof, but... The thing that I'm seeing is that these mysterious, these teamwork people are like, oh good, another component of the team, right? I think the best partners for you in general and the best people for you, especially the social people trying to engage with you and bring you out of the their, the picture and stuff like that or bring you out into life are people who know what part socially you fit into, right? Like what role do you fit into or where would you fit socially? I think people who know how to place people in certain social situations and make things work socially, like how do I explain this? It's like if you guys were, I know I brought up chemistry as an example for you guys, which I know you that might not be your thing that you study, but it could, you could be something else entirely. But um, the people that you're, that would be the best for you are people who are social, how do I put this? social chemists, right? So people who know who to introduce to who to make something work specifically to create like an engaging chemistry, if that makes sense. And that'll just happen naturally when you, when you hang out with that one social person who invites you out, right? Not all social people are like that. A lot of social people have a lot of high hopes that are very unrealistic. And like you guys, you guys are very real people. You understand re the reality of the situation, right? You understand what's going on really. Um, and that's the thing, especially with this real world here, it makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of people who are social connectors in this world. <laughs> I've met a lot of them too. Um, 
where they try to connect you with someone and it doesn't work out. It's like the matchmaker who is not good at matchmaking. And it's it's obvious, right? It's like you meet the person, you're like, this is not going anywhere. You know, so it's like, you're gonna, there's, you're gonna have to break a few eggs to make an omelet, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, let me read this card one more time. It says, the only real thing that is real is love. Shift your focus back to love. I do think that with this card here of wanting to be independent, but having that breaking point, right, where you need to branch off and be social, um, remember to tune back into love, right, and loving vibrations. Also, I'm, I'm getting a strong vibe of showing the people that you love that you care about them, you know, sharing some affectionate words every once in a while and just showing that you care about people that are in your life could go a long way into bridging that distance for you guys. Because I do see you guys are very heady, intellectual, psychic, um, intuitive downloads, mainly focused on like physics or chemistry or things like real, real life sciences. You apply your intuition to real life sciences. I feel like you guys, or mathematics, something like that. I, I'm just getting a general vibe of someone being really studious and just blowing away the competition in an educational format um, just because they have like um, like alien-like intelligence that's like not of this world. So those are the things that make you irresistible. Thank you guys again for letting me read for you. I really had a fun time today. It was a lot of it was a lot of pleasure. Um, I normally don't get readings for your type of personality. Um, I'm going to be honest on my channel. I, I still think if you guys really resonate with my energy, you should subscribe because um, there might be another reading for you in the future. But um, you guys probably have a hard time finding tarot readings that fit your personality, to be honest. Um, but <laughs> uh, I'm going to end the reading there. Um, so yeah, like or comment, subscribe if you feel like that. And yeah, I'll move on to the next group. And thank you guys again so much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next pick a card. Bye. Hey, group five. This is if you picked the snake skin agate. So this is such a cool stone. This is one of the stones I was initially like really drawn to when I went to my this is like from my second gem show or something like that, or I discovered this stone at my second gem show. Um, yeah, it's one of the first stones I've ever purchased, this this particular type of stone, snakeskin agate. So uh, let's get into your reading. Um, okay, so archetype cards first. Uh, what makes group five irresistible? Storyteller and Midas Miser. Wow, okay. Let's see, let's get some tarot cards. What makes group five irresistible? What makes group five irresistible? Already with Storyteller and Miser, I'm seeing strong indications that you guys are really wealthy. One thing that makes you irresistible is you have a lot of wealth and you are not afraid to share your wealth with others. Uh, Miser talks about being stingy with your wealth sometimes, so I do see that you guys are selective in who you share your wealth with. And I think that makes it even more special when you do share your wealth with people. Um, you don't just share your wealth with anyone, right? Like it, I think it, it's, it's either that the wealth has to be earned, like people have to like earn, um, not that they have to earn your love through money or anything like that. It's just that, um, yeah, there's a strong vibe of like, I feel like you guys just keep it with your close circle, if that makes sense. Like, it's like you only share wealth with your close ones. For others of you, you're pretty magnanimous with, uh, like, lots of people. But the thing that I'm seeing here is um, strong vibes of, like, oh, yeah, we have, okay, this, okay, that makes sense. Um, strong vibes of, like, just sharing your wealth with close ones or, like, making sure your close ones are provided for. Because uh, Midas and Miser coming out together, Midas is, like, the king made of gold, right? I think that's what the story, how the story goes. Midas is, like, the king who anything he touched turns to gold right and miser is someone who is just hoarding things hoarding their money hoarding their resources right um the the, the imagery that i'm getting here for you is it's like small kingdom 
but everyone prospers, right? So it's like, I feel like you guys are like govern a small group of people, but you really take care of that small group of people. Like you really make those small group of people flourish, right? And Storyteller is also showing me that you guys are like really entertaining. So that's really amazing as well. Um, let's see what we have here. Strong angelic energy. I think you guys are in strong communication with angels for sure. Wow. I think internally with this card being in reverse, I think you guys, this is getting these strong vibes. It's something that makes you irresistible is you have a, a guardian angel that keeps very, very close watch on you. That's almost a part of your personality, right? Um, because this card is in reverse, this guardian angel could communicate with you in your own head. Um, so you might hear messages or downloads in a, like with this crown chakra right here being like the third eye being ignited. Um, I'm seeing that you guys get a lot of divine inspiration in your head that your angel's putting in your head, right? So for example, you might think of a story to tell or something to say or some kind of thing to share with someone. That's divine inspiration telling you to tell that story. That's why you're so entertaining. That's why everyone laughs at your jokes. It's because it's because you're getting divine messages of what to say. Um, very strong indications of that. Uh, with the judgment card here, I also think that you guys because you're channeling these stories through your body, people view you as an angel and they see you as a very stimulating version of an angel. Like, for example, um, so you're gonna take these cards together, right? Temperance, there is an angel on this card, right? And it's reversed, which means it's in your head, it's an internal thing. Judgment is the external situation. This is how people are viewing you. They're excited, they're aroused, they're out of their graves. They've come back alive from the dead. You're invigorating to them. Um, that's one thing that makes you irresistible. And people see you as kind of angelic. With this cross here, it's reminding me of health. And it makes me think of healing, right? It makes me feel like your stories heal the bodies of other people. Um, you're in, you're, the fact that you can make people laugh um, the fact that you can in, that you're entertaining, that you're engaging, that no matter what the situation, you're getting divine guidance on how to make people laugh. That's helping their health. So, for example, um, people who sometimes people who um, are unhealthy, I'm just gonna be honest, haven't laughed in a really long time. <laughs> you know, like um, yeah. And so I'm just I'm just seeing that you guys help people laugh. You help people have a good time. You help people. You arouse your audience, right? You make them excited. You make them motivated. You make them um, with your stories. You can increase their positivity, right? Um, there's a strong vibe that your story tell. Your stories that you tell are very, very motivating, and that's something that makes you very irresistible. Um, you. I'm back to this angel though. You have a close angel. Um, also, I'm noticing these yellow flowers. Yellow in general might be a color that um, your angel likes to communicate, like they like to show you yellow to like communicate with you. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing here too is they also, this angel also helps you shift your priorities. So they help you shift your priorities in the correct direction. But mainly what I'm seeing is they have a way of engaging your storytelling abilities. They, they put, they put story, not, it's not that they put stories in your head. I think your stories come from real life and just your life in general, but your angel helps you know what story to share in a situation. And you guys might not think this is what's happening. I've, and the reason I'm saying this is because this is in reverse, which indicates it's something coming from within. You might just feel you have a divine inspiration from within you. Um, you might not even feel like you even have a guardian angel. Although some of you I know believe in that, um, there's just a feeling that you're being fed the stories, if that kind of, or the inspiration to tell the stories, right? Like you might not, because honestly, like I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't have this ability. When I'm in my social life, I'll tell, I think I'll tell a funny story, and I think it's a funny story, and no one laughs, and then like. Like I'll tell a different story to someone else and I don't know the right time to tell these stories. It's just not my gift, right? Like I have other gifts and it's just not my gift to like make people laugh on cue, right? Like I can't just bring it out of them whenever I feel like it, right? But you guys have divine inspiration to get people to laugh on cue. And the cool thing about this with Storyteller is you can also make people think too, like um, stories can bring in so many different facets like of components and stuff, you know, like technically when I read tarot, that's kind of a form of storytelling as well, you know, because I'm seeing images in the cards and storytelling. So that's in a way that's divine guidance for storytelling. But the main thing I'm seeing with you guys is you arouse people, you get people excited, you make people laugh. 
There's things that you say and you're, that I feel like you're just so entertaining and you're, that you're full of abundance. Like you really provide wealth. You provide laughter. You provide all these amazing things for people around you. Um, it's interesting because I also see with Miser here, there's a strong feeling of wanting more. Like the, these two cards right here are giving me lack mindset. And it might be that you guys have an underlying lack mindset. Even though you're amazing people, you're definitely guided by higher beings. You're on the right path for sure. You're a good person. I mean, I'm getting strong, good person energy from this vibe. Like what makes you irresistible is that you're a good person. I see that there's still an underlying lack. There's an underlying feeling of what I have is not enough. You know, um, and it's coming through in a way that that's what's motivating you to make more money is kind of what I'm seeing. And it's also what's motivating you to share your wealth with others. I think you guys see other people and you look at their life and you go, they don't have enough. And so you help them out. You give them money and stuff like that. I think some people may have gotten even upset with you at some points in life because some people don't want help, right? They don't want any help. They don't want any like handouts or anything like that. And when you guys saw a need for someone suffering, you tried to help them. I'm seeing this image of someone like, like these people on the streets, like being like, no, I don't want your help. It's like if this preacher came out, because this, okay, so these stained glass windows are usually represent a church in this card. And these people are homeless outside of the church. It's like if this, this priest or this preacher came out of the church and help try to help these people like hey come into the church have some warmth and they're like no we don't want any help from you you know we don't want any help we can take care of ourselves right people who are very independent and very proud are not going to like your energy i'm going to be honest your energy is very much the vibe of like that caregiving um like not even father figure i'm not getting father figure it's very it's very caregiving because i feel like you guys help people out like resource wise but it's almost like you guys see a need and you seek to fulfill it, right? Like you see people struggling and you seek to help them, right? You seek to enlighten them. You see, seek to make them happy, right? Um, you see people struggling and you want to alleviate their pain is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. And this comes from an underlying feeling that they don't have enough and also that you don't have enough. Um, there's a feeling of like, I need more. And there's a feeling that like the people in my circle, the people that are close to me, they need more too. Like we all need more. We need to be better. We need to be bigger. We need to be more wealthy. We need to be happier. There's strong vibes of that kind of nature, right? Because internally, this is indicating that the goal is that you want a sense of like, and this is the interesting thing. This could be this mindset could be keeping you guys from feeling content in life. And so you might feel like on some level that you don't have a feeling of contentment. But at the same time, I think it's almost like something that could come later in life. With the death card here, you guys are going to go through a lot of different chapters. Um, it's also making me feel like the people who are attracted to you are going to change over time. So you might actually have different phases of your life where different types of people are drawn to you. Um, this is really interesting because I honestly feel like if you guys, I don't know if you guys are, but if you guys are the types that like variety and the types of people that are attracted to you, or you want to know that you can attract every single type of person in this world, I think by the end of your life, you're going to realize at various points in your life, you've attracted all different kinds of people, right? Um, you guys have a very way of adapting, similar to another group that um, accepted everyone for who they were. You guys have a similar way of adapting by knowing what's going to be entertaining for people to listen to and knowing your audience, right? Knowing your audience and being fed divine guidance through your stories, right? Um, you're such a good and generous person and so healthy for like humanity and especially your small group. Because I am saying it's mainly your small group that you help. But if there were more people like you, it's more small groups. I honestly think people there would be humanity would be a better place, right? Um, I think that this one reason why you attract this angelic guidance because angels are attracted to people who are good and people who do good things and and um, produce good works is kind of the thing that I'm seeing here. Especially your angel, they they they're attracted to you because you're a good person. And just with the death, going back to the death card, I do think that like, even in this death card, like death is appearing right here, right? And all these people have these offerings, right? This, this priest has this offering to death and this baby has this offering to death, right? Um, there's a strong vibe that you might encounter people who are like helping you offer them things, if that makes sense. So for example, you might find people who are 
I'm also seeing people offering you things as well at some point. There's a strong message here as well. Don't let yourself run dry, right? Don't help people to the point where you suffer. That's only going to be for some of you because honestly, for most of you, I'm seeing you view yourself as equally as the people in your close circle, right? You know that you have to survive in order for them to survive. And I know that you, you also think in your head, it's not enough for yourself. Like I'm getting a strong message that you guys believe that too. You're like, I need to succeed, but my close circle needs to succeed too. Like it's almost like they're an extension of you is kind of the vibe that I'm getting and you all need to succeed. I'm seeing also... You guys have learned that some people in this world don't want help. And I feel like you don't connect with those people at all. It's almost like the people that are so independent that want to suffer in their misery without any help at all. I think you guys don't connect with them because you're like, okay, you're just going to reject my help anyway. So why am I going to even bother? You know, it's almost like you want your gift to be received with grace. You know, I feel like you guys... Um, worked hard for your ability to bestow gifts on others, to bestow stories and entertainment on others. Um, I just honestly feel like you want your gift to be received with great. I feel like you guys are just very generally like just want to share the good wealth with others. Honestly, that's the vibe that I'm getting. It's just you want to share the wealth. You want other people to succeed. You want your close friends to succeed. Um, you're a master at sharing stories for whatever purpose, whether it's to get people entertained, whether it's to get people to think, whether it's to get people to be motivated, whatever it is, it uplifts people. It gets people out of their dead graves where they felt dead and buried and like done for and gets them excited and motivated for life again. Yeah. And it's almost like with crowd work could be beneficial for you guys as well. Judgment cards, my card about like crowd work or having like the ability to manipulate crowds or um, how do I put this? to like awaken energy and group dynamics. I just realized I didn't get you guys a Whispers of Love card. I have to pull that right now. Extra card for you guys. Something was missing in this reading and it was the Whispers of Love card. Let's see what, let's see what you guys get. Um, be in the present and dream of the future when we dream everything is possible. Wow. I'm seeing this shining sun in this card. I feel like you guys are like sunlight to people. Yeah, this card is also calling my attention back to this Nine of Cups card, right? The Nine of Cups card talks about contentment in upright in its upright position. It's a man who's content with everything he has. He's happy with what he has. It can be a wish fulfilled card because sometimes when the Nine of Cups card appears, it represents, it represents like completion in a sense and having your wish fulfilled because all these cups are things that he's had fulfilled in his life, right? Being the present and dream of the future is kind of just reminding me that sometimes if you guys worry about your lack mindset, even though it's motivating you to help others and help yourself and create more wealth, um, no matter what phase in life you're at, especially if you're already taken care of, you have food, you have shelter, you have all your needs met, there's no need for more. There's more of a sense of wanting, needing to live in the present moment, right? Um, the future will come, right? It's like talking about dreaming of the future and being in the present. And this is when we dream everything is possible. I honestly feel like you guys, it's like your dreams are benefiting you. But at the same time, the cards are just urging you a slight nudge to be more in the present moment. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Honestly, I feel like you guys are such good people. You're very self-actualized. You have a lot going for you. Um, I think throughout life with this death card here, you're going to attract a lot of different types throughout your life. You're going to have a lot of phases in your life where a lot of different types of people are attracted to you. Um, this even goes for when you're married. So when you guys finally settle down and find the person of your dreams you'll still have people in your life of different types of people being attracted to you, right? You guys are very like attractive to a wide group of people, but specifically at different phases in your life. So you might go for one phase of your life where you attract a whole bunch of people who are, you know, who are like, you know, maybe theater people. And then you go through another phase of your life where you attract a whole bunch of people who are like thugs. And then maybe you go through another period of life where you attract a whole bunch of people who are like, 
goth people, right? I'm stereotyping here, obviously, you know, shouldn't stereotype, but you'll notice there's certain types that are attracted to you. You might attract really funny people at one point in your life, and the next period of your life attract people who are really like sad or pessimistic. There's just gonna be a lot of different types attracted to you at different times, right? Um, it's all part of your angel's plan to have you heal people through storytelling. And that's part of your mission, right? It's also what makes you irresistible, um, is to heal people through storytelling. Um, I think that's a strong component here. Um, especially because we have two angel cards in your deck, which just reminds me of divine purpose, mission in life, path forward. Um, I know you guys probably think that your mission in life is to provide for others, whether like financially specifically, I'm seeing like you guys might think that it's important to get a really high paying job so you can provide for your friends and family. But I'm seeing more your mission in life is to entertain and to provide humor and good fun and positivity in the realm of entertainment to other people. I think that's going to be more important and keep you more in the present moment in general than it is to focus on the wealth. The wealth is a, another side of you, right? It, both things make you irresistible and make you very attractive to other people. Um, like I said, there is a little bit of a dichotomy here where some pe there's going to be some people in this world, very independent, don't want handouts, don't want help. Um, and that's how they'll see it. They'll see it as a handout. They won't see it as like you like reaching out to like help them. They're going to see it as like, oh, this is charity, right? Um, and these will be people that are even at the lowest of the low, right? Like, and they still, and you'll, you'll see them and you'll think they need help and you'll try to help them and they won't want it. Don't get too offended when this happens. Um, I honestly don't think you're going to run into too many of these people. And for the most part, I think you guys have learned to keep your, like your abundance sharing in your inner circle, right? Where you're, you, I think it's very much like I said in the beginning of the reading where you keep it selective with the people that are close to you. And I think you guys have learned this because some people have like, a, like, They've either abused your gifts, abused what you gave them, right? They didn't treat it well or they didn't like spend the money well or something like that. It's almost like they didn't um, respect the gift, right? They, they either wasted it or they just didn't respect it, right? Um, I see that the people in your close circle respect your gifts. They respect your blessings. They respect what you give them. Um, and yeah, and I think this storytelling ability, your angels are saying that like the vibe that I'm getting is like it works with everyone, even the people who are independent and don't want your financial handouts, the storytelling thing is gonna work with them. You'll be able to tell them a story and uplift their spirit a little bit and make them feel better. You just won't be able to provide for them financially, right? So the storytelling thing, you're meant to do that for everyone and anyone, right? Just keep sharing those stories, keep share entertaining people, keep motivating people, keep inspiring people with your stories. I see that's something that's very beneficial for you in the long run. Um, and I think that's something that's a life purpose for you as well. It's also something that makes you irresistible. It's, it's a, it's a, one of those things where it's like, you get the, you get to have your cake and eat it too, you know? So, um, just keep being your fun loving self. And, um, I hope you guys like this reading. Um, if you guys like this reading, please like or comment below. If you really enjoy this reading, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We're always welcoming new subscribers here at Cody Tarot. And with that said, we're going to end the readings here. This is the last pick a card today. I just want to say how thankful I am that you were here today. And I really appreciate you being here. And um, yeah, it was an honor to read for you. And I'll see you guys in the next pick a card. Bye.